And speaking of flow references, let's discuss some of the standards that are available. But before we begin that, let's talk about primary and transfer standards so you understand this terminology. A primary flow standard uses measurements of basic units like length and time. An example would be a piston prover, and I'll show that in a second. Whereas transfer standards are instruments that are calibrated against another device and then brought into your lab. These would include things like laminar flow devices and other thermal mass flow instruments. The piston prover, like the one shown here, works with a column of gas from the flow path that sweeps a measured volume over a measured time. Now, these can be supplied with different size cylinders to use for different flow rates. When calibrating mass flow instruments, it's very important that you understand the reference conditions, or STP, standard temperature and pressure. We'll get into that in a second. Otherwise, the reading you get on the front of your piston prover will not agree with the reading from your unit under test. There are some options for transfer standards. There are laminar flow elements that can offer very accurate flow measurements. And these devices measure the pressure drop across the laminar, as well as the gas pressure and temperature to determine the flow rate. Those also could be sized for different range of flow rates. So if you're going to invest in one of these, um, you want to consider a filter. Another choice for a flow transfer standard is to just use another thermal mass flow device. These are generally going to be far less expensive and in many cases are going to require, uh, will provide the required accuracy. But whatever flow standard you're going to use, make sure that you decide upon the reference conditions that are being used both by your flow reference and the unit under test. Now what do we mean by reference conditions or STP? Well, often you know, we use volumetric units like cc per minute to describe the flow rate. But a cc is a, a unit of volume, not a, not a mass unit, molar unit. A mass unit is something like, for example, standard cubic centimeters per minute, or SCCM. And what I've shown here in this diagram is a cylinder of gas, and let's assume for a moment that it's a cubic centimeter, that is moving across a cross-sectional area in some unit of time. Let's assume one minute. So we've got one cc of gas sweeping through every minute. Now, if I want to know the number of molecules in that volume, then I need to know the, the reference pressure and temperature of that gas. And we're going to use the ideal gas law, P equals NRT. So the reference conditions give us a way to define the number of molecules in that cc of volume. So, and here's a, a tip. If you're, if you're ever seeing a difference between your flow standard and your unit under test of around, say, 7%, then take a look at your reference conditions before you do anything else. It may be simply a problem with reference conditions. One other thing I'll mention, if you want to convert between systems of mass flow units, then you can pick up our free app. Uh, that's available for iPhone or Droid, or you can also use the online converter um, at massflowconverter.com. All right, when you're thinking about flow reference, uh, decide what ratio of uncertainty that you would like to claim in your data. In some labs, there's going to be a demand for a ratio of 4 to 1. In other words, the, ref the flow reference has an uncertainty that is four times better than the uncertainty of the unit under test. But this, of course, depends on the application. In many cases, the user may just be looking for a confidence check, and a less expensive flow standard is more adequate. 